All right, so what I'm going to do here is what would have been our lecture, except for Snowpocalypse Part 2, which from my window isn't too bad. Um, I'm going to record this into parts. And so the first thing I was going to do is we're going to look at Simpson's rule to approximate an initial value problem. Um, and what we're going to hope that we get from this is I'm looking for a good sized pencil here as I continue to talk. There we go. Um, so using Simpson's rule to approximate the value at a point for an initial value problem. Now, one of the things to note about Simpson's rule is it's approximating the value at a given point. Um, the techniques of why you did series and sequences and these um, series solutions to integrals was because not all integration is something that uh, you can find all the values for. And when we want machines to do it for large quantities of things, they really have to calculate a list of points. I think you're already starting to see as we, as we do um, different homework that our numerical answers um, need to be um, iter iterated. They're in iterations. And integration is a technique of iterating um, uh, a sum of infinitesimals. All right, the big S symbol. That's an S in German, and it was for the grand sum. And um, Leibniz thought it was the sum of many infinitesimals. And so there's an analogy between that and sigma type sums. And we, we exploit that analogy in generating our solutions, or our functions of our solutions. Um, and you have this in statistics. You can do discrete probability distributions where you count things in bins and you sum them up. Well, that has the limit where it approaches um, functions for a very large number of things. It, it approaches smooth functions. Um, how we divide our space and how we integrate across that space, the, the concept of sum and integral are conceptually within the same area. So the IVP I'm going to look at is the one I think we started before, but I have y prime plus 2xy equals 1, and I have an initial value of y at x equals 2 is equal to 1. So I look at this, and this is linear, with a p of x equal to 2x, and a q of x equal to 1. I want to use the integrating factor to solve, um, just because I like using the different techniques. So my mu of x is going to equal e to the integral of p of x dx, which is equal to e to the 2x dx, which is equal to e to the x squared. And so I'm going to multiply this back through the original equ equation. So the original equation is going to change in form. And it's going to look like e to the x squared y prime plus, um, I'm going to leave the e to the x squared up front and have the 2xy here equals e to the x squared. And so uh, I have now transformed this into a form noting that this is e to the x squared y. Take the derivative, right? It's the whole purpose of, of this technique is to notice that this is a differentiating by parts if this was my original differentiation. And I'm going to integrate both sides. 
but I'm already aware that I am not going to be able to solve this. This is one of those integrals that if I look through my shams, if I look through all my techniques, I'm stuck. Um, so on this side, I'm going to introduce a change of variable because I want my answer to be in terms of x. And so I'm going to integrate from x equals 2 to x. And this lets me get my answer to fall out in a form where I have x as one part and whatever the integral to 2 is for the other part. Well, I have to do the same thing on this side. So I have to integrate from x equals 2 to x. And what's nice about that for this integral is, be, and we're integrating in terms of the derivative of this function, so I'm just going to leave the prime mark here, is we know what y is at x equals 2. We have a value for it. So we can co come back in and we can say that we're going to have, if I use, this is going to be the derivative or the, or the in integrand or when I do the integral. So on my upper bound, I get e x squared y. That's going to be the upper bound of this integration. Right? Using my fundamental um, theorem of calculus, the lower bound is going to be e to the fourth. And what is y? At x equals 2, it's 1 times 1. Right? My upper bound, I put x in to the derivative or the in integration of this. And the integration of a derivative is itself. So I get this function back. And I have to evaluate this function when x equals x and x equals 2. Well, there's the x equals x answer. And there's the x equals 2 answer. And then this side is just this side. OK. Well, I want to solve for y. So I'll isolate y. By adding this to each side. And then I'm going to divide by this. And dividing by an exponential is the same as multiplying through by its negative. And so. This is the integral I want to solve. But I want to solve it at a particular point. Um, so I want some value in here that I'm going to solve it at. And so we're going to use Simpson's rules, which is in the appendix of the book. What it is is turning this integral into a sum, and a particular sum um, to go. Give me one second here. I want to add some. Add some space to my. Uh, I should do it. Hopefully, it didn't add it all white. No, nope, we're good. All right, adding some space down to the bottom. And so th this is this is what what I want to work on. Well, what Simpson's rule says is I can approximate some integral, which is the general form of words, if I keep track of my x values. Uh, and my integral is on some range from a to b. I can keep track of my x values by walking through in steps. And what steps I'm going to walk through are going to be k steps. So my integral is from a to b. And I'm going to have a number of steps. And the number of steps that I have is k is going to equal, or it's defined as, to 2n. There's some defining value we want a multiple of 2 of. And so this means our step size in x is going to be 
b minus a over 2n. It gives us a step size. Notice this is similar to Euler's method where we were developing a step size as the difference in the two uh, x values. We figured out how many times we wanted to walk over it, and then we used that to get our next x value. In fact, we start with a, and we add the next step. We add the next step. We add the next step. It just has this multiplying factor of 2 here. Simpson's method is very, very much like Euler's method. It, it just has a better averaging technique for it. And what we can do is we can create a function of y that we throw in these particular x values. So we throw in an x value, we get out a y value. And what we're going to say is whatever our original integral was from a to b, this function of xk, this y thing we want, is the integral term in it. Uh, so we're taking this thing here and we're saying you're going to be our y. Now what Simpson's rule says, whoa, zooming in, Simpson's rule does not say zoom in, is it says that I can approximate the integral using h over 3 so I'm averaging based off of my step sizing, step sizing, and I'm going to do the sum of, and I'm going to use my k equals 1 to n. Now remember, I used 2n to figure out my step sizes here, but I'm only counting up to n. And the thing I'm going to sum is I'm going to move back 2 on y plus 4 times 1 back on y. That's what these indexes are saying is backwards and forwards, plus the y value that I'm at right now. And so I look, I'm centered one step below, and I look two steps below. This has more weight in my average. I'm averaging across three of those values. That's why it's dividing. So I'm taking an average, and I'm doing this n times. And what I'm doing is my current y value is based off of the previous two y values. And I average three across those. And that builds myself up from a to the next step to the next step until I get to b. And so this is an averaging technique of three values of this function weighted by the step size and that the previous value is going to help with, with the current value, which means that the previous value, you know, a plus its little bit, is going to help build the next sum part in here. And so that's what Simpson's rule is doing for us. Let's use it on the integral um, that we have up here. So I want to use this thing in orange here, so I'm going to bring that down in green. And I'm just going to set up Simpson's rules and then in, you know, I'll leave you with the joy of messing with the calculator. Or, as you will learn over and over again, when you have series and sequences, when you have something that iterates, computers are great for it. They're designed to iterate um, better than we are. And Euler, Lagrange, all these people working on early um, calc would have been really happy to have computers. Uh, they used to go through and make tables of data all the time so they could get feel the functions, the, the fact that they can spit them out, come through. You should also appreciate series and sequence, which drove you nuts, drove, drove me nuts, drove everyone nuts, is if things converge, our computer estimates get better. If we can get things into some type of, you know, series or sequence, we can have a computer loop over it and create it. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make a loop out of this. So I want to figure out what happens at x equals 3. So my integration is going to be from 2 to 3. 
right? Because I'm going to have a y value that's going to need the total of this integral from 2 to 3 to get that individual y value. So now I'm going to ignore this and this, and I'm only going to focus on the integration part. When you come back and actually plug in the y value for 3, you would need to put y3 in here. This would become, well, I'll do it. What, what you actually, the final calculation you need to find y, the y value at 3 is going to be e to the negative 9 times whatever we get from the Simpsons rule plus e to the fourth. And we're going to get some number here. And that'll give us, you know, x, whoops, that'll give us one value on a graph. It'll give us y equals 3. And so the great thing about a computer is you have a computer come back and do it, get the next one and the next one, and right, you build the whole thing. But right now, we just want one point, x equals 3, and what is the y of 3 of that point? Right? So that's what we're focusing on. So my integral, well, let's see here. I'm only going to do n equals 2. Right? It's probably good to do an n equals 4 or 8 in practice. And once you get this method, method down, 4 shouldn't be too bad. Um, but for examples, I, I'm going to do 2 and um, show you how the sums come out. So if n equals 2, then my h is my a minus b over 2n, which is 4, or 1 fourth. So I'm going to step 1 fourth. So I'm going to write out ahead of time all my x values. So x is 0 is going to be 2. x of 1 is going to be 9 fourths x of 2 is going to be 5 halves, x of 3 is going to be 11 fourths, and x of 4 equals 12. And so this process of the a, b, if I come back up here, right here, this rule says I can create a list of x values that's going to start at a and end at b with a certain step size. And then in this tells me step number 0, it's 2. Step number 1, it, my x is 9 fourth. And so I make a list uh, of all the x values I need. From that, I'm also going to get a list of y values. So why not? Why not? Is e to the fourth because my is, let me come back here, my function, let me, oh, where do I want to put my function? I scroll just a little bit past it. The function I'm using is this part right here. So let me put my, actually, my function in first. So my f of xk is going to be e to the, I'm going to keep my x squared because I'm saying x here, xk squared. And so I can make a list of my y values. So I'm going to switch to yellow for y values. So y naught is f of x naught, which is e to the 2 squared, which is 4. Right? So I plop this into here, and I get y naught. And so y1 is e to the x1 or e to the 9 fourth squared, or what is that, 81 sixteenths? Yeah, 81 sixteenths. And look, these are numbers now. Ugly numbers, but numbers. And y3, whoops, y2, can't skip 2, is equal to e to the 25 fourths. y3, is e to the 121 sixteenths. And y4 is e to the 144th. And we have walked our way up, and we have our y values coming through. 
Now, keep adding some size here. Let's just trying not to crash my memory. Sometimes if I put too much um, stuff in video memory. And so now I can make my sums. And so my integral is going to be h over 3. Well, my h was 1 fourth. So I'm going to multiply everything by 1 twelfth. And I'm going to do the sum from k equals 1 to n, which was 2. So I'm only doing two sums here. And in those sums, I'm doing y2k minus 2 plus y2, whoops, 4, plus 4, 2k minus 1, plus y. 2k. And so this looks like I'm going to have 1 12th out front times, well, my first movement through the sum, I get 1 times 2 is 2, minus 2 is 0, so I get e to the fourth. Plus 4 times my 2k, so it's 2 minus 1, which is y to the 1, so I get 4 times e to the 81 sixteenths plus, come out here, I get y2, which is e to the 25th fourth. And that did my k equals 1, so I come back k equals 2. I get 2 times 2 is 4 minus 2, so I get y2, which is e to the 25th fourth. Notice how the end point of one sum is the beginning point of the other. And then and this one is 2k, so that's 4, minus 1 is 3, and y3 is e to the 121st sixteenths. And then I come back to the last one, and 2, 2 is 4, e to the 144. And I sum all this, and I get an estimated value for my integral. I take the number that comes out of that, and I drop it into here. I then add e to the fourth to it, and then I multiply it by e to the negative ninth. And that's how we use Simpson's rules. And, and the, the appreciation is it lets, it lets the computer do, uh, iterative things are very good for computers to approximate, especially when the integrals are ugly. Euler's method doesn't always work. Simpson's is not a bad way to do it. If there's an integral we can't do, we can do it by hand to get an idea where we're at, and then we can keep telling the computer, hey, let's make n bigger, 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 and bigger and until it no longer works or you crash memory, which I've done a lot.